Hello and good morning. The Epiclectic Hope Reading coming at you with a, a, a very urgent request for help and support and gang, gang love. Um, I went to annulment court yesterday and uh, was basically told that if I wish to proceed with the annulment, that I'll be wasting all of our times because wasting all our time because. Because I would be standing in the way of the meat and potatoes of the divorce. The marriage would be dissolved in either case, but I would be barring time, but I would be preventing us having time to discuss many things related to the divorce, such as. Um, alimony and child support, uh, division of property and assets, etc. So I was basically guilted into saying that my marriage was valid and needed to be dissolved rather than forced and of, you know, Thomas having me marry myself to his alleged dead twin, as he told me in the courthouse when we got forcibly married. I, I will discuss the factors that the judge gladly accepted and allowed as I continue here. But Basically, uh, what happened throughout, I think it was like two and a half hours we were in that courtroom, was uh, I got the restraining order finalized. I can protect myself and my cat, who's in my lap here, so you see my hands moving. I'm currently petting a kitty. <laughs> but uh, my, myself and my kitty are on the restraining order. I was able to adequately prove some abuse. However, my son was taken off the restraining order and his school was therefore taken off the restraining order. Towards the beginning of the hearing, Judge Torrington told me that a district court cannot put a child on a restraining order. Now that's completely false or else Aaron's school wouldn't have been on there the entire time, and Aaron wouldn't have been on there since the beginning of October. So that's a lie. Um, the clerk alleviated my frustration by telling me that I could go to the juvenile court, which I will have to do today after I take my son to school. Um, Thomas said twice in court yesterday his plan to go to Clayton Early Learning in order to muscle time in with Aaron, either with visitation and also with, you know, just straight taking him from school. He expressed that twice in the hearing yesterday, and Judge Torrington didn't bat an eyelash. I got to discussing briefly, not enough, uh, Thomas's knife fetish and collection, and how he would display the knives constantly any time I attempted to disobey Master's orders. Thomas stated that he was a knife vendor in Wisconsin and that he came here. He falsely said that we wanted to get into the knife business. I don't like weaponry. I appreciate a good hunting tool, but the tack assaults and the short swords and the huge blades that are in my Operation Freedom Victory moment when I was able to dispose of the knives. This is a seriously deadly collection of blades. This isn't something in a cute little shop. None to mention that those frost cutlery knives are, as I said in the Mission Freedom Victory movie, 
that they're worthless. They're not good for sale. They're good for killing your property. That's what they are good for. I was not allowed to make any mention of that. When I attempted to, Judge Torrington cut me off. She also cut me off as I was discussing the forcible nature of the, you know, of the slavery-derived sex. I was not allowed to discuss that Thomas could freely kill me five blocks away from the courthouse if I chose not to marry him. I was in stark fear and terror for five years for the safety and well-being of myself and my son while I was pregnant with him and for the four years since. And I'm increasingly scared for him now because Thomas admitted to the judge that he still has knives. He claimed falsely to the judge that I gave him knives, Spyderco knives, of course, being local from Colorado. So he got some brownie points and he got to keep the knives he still has despite it stating in the restraining order several times, as many of us know, that any guns, ammunition, and other weapons are to be surrendered at the time of service of the restraining order. This is known. You cannot allow somebody with a domestic violence restraining order to have and own weapons. However, Jennifer Torrington is freely allowing my owner my rapist, <clears throat> to possess these items, knowingly and willfully. In addition to freely allowing my rapist and former owner to possess knives, a collection of knives, which he's years experienced and familiar with, many, many varieties of, freely allowed to keep them, it's cool, whatever, enjoy your knives, Mr. Stetzer. I was, according to her, able to prove to some extent the abuse that Thomas Stetzer inflicted on myself and my cat. We are listed on the restraining order. The family pet must remain with petitioner at all times. However, Thomas was able to get Aaron and his school removed because my rapist and former owner whom I showed voice clips of the constant fights I showed my narrative profiles that the uh, child family investigator uh, just disregarded completely because they weren't on her forms format I've been compiling these written works over the past two, couple of years since I got since I found out about Google Docs I was like hey wait a minute I can type something up and it doesn't matter if master smashes my phone it's still there that's when I started writing and documenting the constant 24-7 abuse that Thomas Stetzer inflicted on myself and my son and our cat it extended so far as overnight evenings, which another thing I was not allowed to discuss. Thomas would pretend to be asleep while he beat me at night. Like, you know, obviously not asleep. This is what I endured nightly, every single night, all night. If I chose not to occupy, uh, if I chose not to occupy our bed, if I, if I wanted to sleep on the couch or on the floor or anywhere that wasn't next to my rapist, I was also not allowed to sleep because the moment that Thomas would wake up and discover that I wasn't 
leg wraps to him. He would. It's over. It's over. I I need to keep reminding myself that this is over, even though it's not. But most of it is over. Moving forward. Um. When I was discovered to be sleeping on my own, Thomas would wake up, find me, turn on lights all over the house, start talking loudly, banging pots and pans, not cooking anything, just banging pots and pans, not doing dishes, just banging pots and pans, talking loudly to nobody, and slamming and opening Doors, going in and out of the apartment, just turn, turning the TV up to maximum volume, sitting on the space where I'm trying to lay down. This would continue until I would get tired of it and go lay down in Thomas Stetzer's bed. And then he'd be like, that's a good mama. And he would turn off everything in the house. And he'd put the pots and pans away. And he'd come and lay down next to me and come in for a cuddle. <clears throat> this was what our lives were. I documented that our bedroom was filled with my owner's hustle, his junk food, his candy, his soda, his snacks. And that the tiny area in which I was allowed to exist was covered and filled with his and Aaron's belongings. I was not allowed to have space in my home. I documented that. I showed her that. No problem here. Nothing wrong here. Just a man in his house. I detailed to her how... Our transitional housing voucher was set to expire after two years. Excuse me. <clears throat> and that I had to go behind Master's back to secure housing for myself and my son. Because Thomas Stetzer wanted to let our transitional housing voucher expire so he could sue the coalition for taking away the voucher that we'd already been awarded to move here to 40th and Colorado. It was Thomas Stetzer's brilliant plan to sue the Colorado Homeless Coalition for making us homeless. <clears throat> now, that's not how it works. As soon as the coalition mentions that we failed to do anything else in the two years to look for housing, we just expected the Homeless Coalition to do it for us. So, you know, somebody popped our name on the disabled lady with family voucher and <clears throat> but you know we can always try for another voucher we just simply failed to we didn't fail to I was forbidden from it Thomas Stetzer harassed and bothered the homeless coalition for a year and a half to give us a permanent housing voucher when people give in to someone like Thomas Stetzer, it's either because they enjoy the slavery and the abuse that he inflicts, or it's because they choose to be completely oblivious to it. Excuse me. After having some fluid break, um, not being allowed to discuss that I had to go behind Master's back to get us housing because Thomas Stutzer had this half-baked dumbass idea to sue the homeless coalition for making us homeless because one homeless because one housing voucher fell through that wasn't gonna work we were gonna be living in our Ford Taurus if Thomas Stutzer had his way and that's where just where we'd be and two and a half hours after that, Child Protective Services would be alerted by the Homeless Coalition that we were homeless. And before we even get the car packed and off the property, Child Protective Services would have taken my son. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Aaron is the only reason discovering that I was pregnant would have by my rapist, by my owner, by the guy with the knives would have caused most women to commit suicide because how the hell are we going to get out? I, however, who had a full suicide plan formed, I was going to die two days after I found out I was pregnant. But then I did find out because I fainted at the St. Francis shelter and they took me in an ambulance to the emergency room. Figured out what the heck was wrong with me. I'm two months pregnant with Aaron. But finding out that I was pregnant showed me that the precancerous ovarian cysts I had didn't keep all the eggs from going through, as I was not allowed to discuss. That the fertility clinic I went to in Wisconsin told me that I was never going to have a child and that I'd be dead of cancer by, before I turned 30. I was started to mention that and was cut off. I tried to mention when we were in the hospital trying to leave and the half a dozen rides that I had secured between the Homeless Coalition, a couple of different people, and uh, Jill Arthur, College City Contact, Thomas's weed customer, she was going to give us a ride. And there was other people, there was like six people who were, oh, this guy from Wisconsin, I don't remember his name. But there was half a dozen people who were set to give us a ride to the hotel from the hospital. Every single one of them bailed. Just like every other time my son or I need anything from these humans, they bail at the last moment. Always. Right with the mission. Up until the last moment when they bail. This is what happened. And so we had to hail a cab and pay $37 to go from St. Joe's to the Traveler's Inn on I-70 at Federal. 37 bucks. I don't have short-term memory. The dent in my head deleted my short-term memory bank. I don't have any RAM. However, I'll remember that $37 for the rest of my life because it almost ended my life. <clears throat> Thomas Stetzer started this massive screaming brawl in our hospital room because I messed up getting us a ride. And then Thomas would have to sell a whole nother carton of cigarettes or a whole nother uh, 15 joints in order to get us to the hotel to pay the cab. And that was my fault, allegedly, entirely my fault. He was so loud and nasty and obnoxious and obscene that the nurses came busting in my room making sure everything's okay. I was terrified that Master would kill us. So I'm like, no, no, everything's good here. I'll take care of this. We'll be out, and out of here and home and out of your way in just a minute. Being a good little cripple and keeping my head down. Wasn't allowed to discuss that. Jennifer Torrington didn't want to hear it. Was not allowed to discuss how Aaron and I were kept in complete isolation for five years. We were on his agenda. We had no independence from him. We jumped to his command at all times for half a decade. He trafficked every bit of income he forced me to make. Wasn't allowed to discuss that. I brought forth the ledger papers detailing his purchased food stamps, his payment to his employee Dave, $40 a day, the marijuana he'd buy for Dave, the stolen candy he would buy, and his profit and expense columns that didn't match his numbers because, duh, blah, blah, even though he documented what he spent on cigarettes for sale every day, 
He didn't document his weed purchases because he's not quite that stupid. She didn't bat an eyelash. There's nothing wrong here. Nothing to see here. No income here. Nothing doing. <clears throat> I made the claims for Aaron's phone, his Wi-Fi grabber, that just my old phone. I had my Google account that he kept hacking into. He said he didn't have it. She believed him. I made a claim for Aaron's Red Rider wagon, his wooden wagon that I got him from panhandling. I was begging for money and earned enough and saw a rummage sale and saw that wagon. It's like, Aaron's going to love this wagon. I can take my son for a walk to the park without master. It never happened. Thomas said that he smashed the wagon. He said that he broke it, that it was smashed, that he threw it away. That's okay. She believes that he doesn't have it anymore. And I am not... I have no right to the wagon. I have no right to the cost of replacing the wagon. I have no rights to it, even though Thomas said in court that he smashed it and disposed of it. He said that. That's fine. That's okay. I'll believe you. You don't have it. I was not allowed to discuss <clears throat> how Aaron, when I, I had to go behind Thomas's back to get him into school before he turned five, he's not five yet. According to Thomas Stetzer's laws of rape and slavery, my son should not be in school yet. Before Operation Freedom, my son was barely talking. He expressed every thought through violence. He fought with everybody. If he wanted to play with you, he hit you with the toy he wanted to play with. I had recently regrown my thumbnail in J January of 2019. My left thumbnail was smashed. He cracked it. He smashed it right in the middle. I had to regrow my thumbnail. Wasn't allowed to discuss that. Wasn't allowed to discuss how Jill Arthur of College Sitter Contact, the founder, would have me clean her apartment after her Airbnb clients left her income-based apartment and how she would pay Thomas. I wasn't allowed to discuss that. I wasn't allowed to discuss how Thomas would run me to the dispensary literally every day to max out my medical permit so that he would have marijuana to sell in gram bags and joints. Wasn't allowed to discuss that. I wasn't allowed to discuss how the child family investigator changed her report from the time she filed it. When she filed her report with the court, the copy that she sent to me anyway, uh, her statement said that Thomas had failed to do anything but make brash claims to his custody rights, making no inquiries to Aaron's well-being or anything else important. She failed to mention that. She failed to mention that the report she sent to me said that she recommended that because of Thomas's complete lack of diligence and my complete excess of diligence, that Aaron was doing so fantastically better now, and what my witnesses had said to her about the abusive situation, she failed to mention that. She failed to mention that she originally recommended that Thomas be removed from my son's life completely, and that I be awarded full custody and decision-making rights. She failed to mention that. She failed to mention that she changed her mind on all of those things. Ever since my rapist got a job, and within getting his job, a month of getting his job, he got an apartment. He doesn't have to disclose the location of his new home. But my address is clearly written on the restraining order. 
because this was our home and Thomas knows where it is and it doesn't pay to keep it a secret. I can't claim I moved. I can't keep my address and try to like smoke screen my home address. It's printed as a big eated Joe's sign on my restraining order. And now remember, sir, you need to stay away from that lady's apartment. This little pinpoint on the map, you can't go there, you just can't. That's, what's up? This, she failed to give me alimony because even though I'm disabled, I listed my official diagnoses to her and where those diagnoses came from. I'm not disabled, according to the courts, because my owner trafficked me for, you know, during the end of 2016 and most of 2017. He trafficked me for an entire year on paycheck, and for the rest of the, the other four of the five years, he had me selling cigarettes and marijuana for him. He had me selling knives for him, which he said in court he had me selling knives for him. It was our endeavor. I don't know anything about these knives other than frost cutlery are worthless. You can't sell them. They're garbage. They suck. They're acme. They suck. They're terrible. They're cheap. They're chintzy. They're, they're not good. They're... Uh, they're worse than generic. And then they sell them for top dollar on the Home Shopping Network. They have their own channel, the Frost Cutlery Cutlery Corner channel. He mentioned all of that, except for that the knives are complete garbage. They're worthless. They're crap. They're a waste of money. He didn't mention that. I wasn't allowed to mention that. Thomas was applauded for being an entrepreneur, basically. And he was allowed to keep the knives that he still has. She didn't bat an eyelash, she didn't say anything after he said that, oh yeah, I still got that knife in my collection with my other knives. He's not allowed to have weapons. And then he twice, like I said, made the mention of taking Aaron's name and the school off the restraining order so that he may go to school to see and take his son home to his new apartment. He's talking about this in court. And Jennifer Torrington is fine with it, has no problem with it. I'm not going to change my order, Ms. Stetzer. I'm a Kirchhoff now, by the way. You even, you, you allow that. I'm a Kirchhoff. My son is still f stuck with his slave name of Stetzer. He's still stuck as Aaron Vincent Bernard Stetzer. Vincent Stetzer being one of the alleged founders, according to Thomas Stetzer's delusions of criminal grandeur. Vincent Stetzer is in my son's name. That's disgusting. That my rapist grandfather, who allegedly with Mr. Harley and Davidson founded the outlaw motorcycle biker bitches, property of and product of slave owners. Thomas Stutzer is allowing that his grant is alleging that his grandfather, along with Mr. Harley and Davidson, founded that bullshit. And that's allowed to be in my son's name. The only reason I'm not dead is because of my son. After a lifetime of being property, after a lifetime of forced unpaid labor, after a lifetime of ownership, after a lifetime of no rights, as I'm beaten and raped and robbed and mugged, 
and denied basic health care and denied food and denied clothing and denied any rights my entire life since birth because my mother Dawn Harold Kirchhoff Sadowski Schmiedel in Tucson, Arizona now because she got to escape her debts in Wisconsin not paying her bills because she's a lazy deadbeat. She's living it up in Tucson, Arizona with this wonderful Verizon customer service job that her son, the Sadowski, uh, he's not a Kirchhoff. I can't say that B word on YouTube. But he's not a Kirchhoff, he's a Sadowski. My classmate Jared's daddy snuck out of mommy's house when I was coming home from school one day. And my half-brother has grown up to look just like the man. <laughs> He's the only one of five children who's not dead or destroyed because of... Dawn Harold Kirchhoff Sadowski Schmiedel's law of slavery. She killed three of her kids. Two in utero through terrible abuse and neglect. 